in this video. I'll show you how to get started using Adobe Photoshop like a pro, even if you've never used it before. Welcome back to the channel. My name is CJam and here I am already in Adobe Photoshop. And if you want to get a copy of Photoshop so you can design along with me, go ahead and check the first few links in this video's description as to where you can get it, right? So what I'm going to be doing next is just going to go ahead and click new file or you can go to file and then new. So let's click the new file button here and I'm going to create a YouTube thumbnail, right? And the size I'm going to be using today is 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels high with a resolution of 300 DPI. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter 1920 by 1080 with a resolution of 300, or you can just use one of Adobe's presets right here and you can create any size template that you want. But obviously what I want today is a 1920 by 1080 pixels. Let's go ahead and click create. This video is also sponsored by Envato Elements, but we'll talk a little bit more about them later on. And the first thing I want to show you guys today is the workspace. Now, this is your general Photoshop workspace, right? So you have your menu bar up top, file, edit, image, etc. We have our toolbars over here on the left. You have your color, swatches, gradients, patterns, etc. You have your layers right here, which is where all of your layers will pop up. You can change the size of the layer. Um, thumbnails, let me just go ahead and set this to medium. And then I have my libraries over here and my properties tab over here. But the key thing to note is that everybody's Photoshop window will look different because you can customize it, right? For example, when I came into Photoshop by default, I didn't have my properties tab right here. Now let me just go ahead and close it. And if I want to bring it back to customize it to how I like or how you like to work, you just go to window and click on properties. Or if you want to enable any other panel, you just find it here. And then I just drag it over here. And that blue line is telling me that the properties tab will go right there. And that's all I have to do. And then I don't want the library to be this big because obviously there's only a few things in it. And all I have to do is just drag it down like so and there i am i'm back where i started so that's how you can customize your workspace next i'm going to show you how to import an image into photoshop now you can do this two ways you can go to file and then place embedded or you can just find the photo on your computer and just drag it into photoshop that's what i'm going to be doing in this case here's my photo in my folder and i'm just going to drag it into photoshop like so and then I can press enter or I can press this check mark up top to place my image. So there I have a photo. The next thing I want to import is I want the Photoshop icon, the Photoshop logo to be on this thumbnail that I'm creating, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and import that. It's in the same folder like my photo, so I'm just going to drag that in. There we are. And if I want to turn it off because it's over my photo, you can use these eyeballs right here to turn off any layer that you don't want to see, right? So that's how you can turn off the visibility of your layers. So for my YouTube thumbnail, what I wanted to say is like Photoshop in five minutes, right? But let's just use the logo and then say like five minutes. So let me hit T on my keyboard for my text tool. Now with each tool that you use over here on your toolbar, whenever you select a tool, like for example, I want to zoom in on this template right here, my project. I hit Z for my zoom tool and you'll notice that the tool controls change up here, right? If I hit V for my move tool, you see it changes. If I hit T for my text tool, it changes up here as well. So let's go back to Z for my zoom tool and then let's hit fit to screen. That way you guys can see what I'm doing, right? You can also hold Alt and roll your mouse wheel and that will zoom for you. Now, what I want to do next for my image is that I want the background to be filled with the purple of the image. See that it stops right here. Now to remedy that, what I'm going to do is, let me just go ahead and duplicate my image by hitting Ctrl and J. And then let me right click on the duplicate. So I have the original copy under the bottom and the duplicate here. Let's turn off the original and then let's right click on the duplicate. And then let's click rasterize layer. Now I can go to edit and then content aware scale. And then I can hold alt and shift and just drag the size of the image here while holding alt and shift. That would be command and option on Mac. And what it did for me is it extended the background for me. See that without affecting the image right here, right? How cool is that? That's the power that you have in Photoshop, right? Now I can bring my image there. 
And what I'm going to be doing next is I'm just going to go ahead and right click on the duplicate and click convert to smart object. That's how I lock back the image, similar to what I had before. Now they look the same, but instead of the original one, this one has a wider background, right? How cool is that? What I'm going to be doing next is editing the image by doing some minor tweaks. So I'm hitting Control Shift and A on my keyboard, Command Shift and A on Mac. And what I'm going to be doing is going to the basic controls here, adding some contrast, you know, taking some of the temperature. You know, you have a lot of controls here that you can um, experiment with. I'm going to um, add a little bit of shadow. Well, remove some of the shadow here and then take off some highlights. Then I'm going to come back down to the color mixer. Then I'm going to find the colors that are present in the image, which are the pink or magentas. We have purples and we have orange and probably some yellows in the skin tone. Let me show you what happens with the orange here. And if I were to slide the orange slider all the way over to the negative, you can see that her skin tone is being affected, right? See that? That's where we are at minus 100. And this is where we were. So let's do about there. Well, not so much. Let's just take off a little bit just because we can. Let's just bump up or take off some of the reds and see what it affects. That's fine. Let's leave it as is. Let's just move the magentas and see what happens. See that? How cool is that? The yellows don't do much. They don't do much. Well, let's just take off some of it just because we can. Blues will affect some of the background as well, but the purples can see the background is actually purple so it will affect the background the blues and the purples right that's fine you can experiment some more with this if you'd like and to save your changes all you have to do is click ok and the reason why i converted the image to a smart object is because all the changes that i just made over here in my layers you know the photo editing if i were to turn this off you see it come back to the original right if i turn it back on it goes back to our edit but if i didn't convert it to a smart object all of these changes would be baked into the image and I could not have gone back like so by double clicking and adjusted anything if I wanted. No, I still have my controls and edits and I can change anything else if I want. But if I didn't convert it to a smart object, I could not do that. So we have our image, we edited our image, we have our Photoshop logo, let's turn it back on. Let's hit Control and T for my transform options to size it down. I'm just picking a corner here dragging this down, sizing it down, and I want it about here. And what I can do next is I can just add some text by hitting T on my keyboard and just clicking and I'll get some placeholder text. And let's just write five minutes, right? Or let's, let's write, make it all caps, five minutes, right? Or should I write five mins? <laughs> let's do five minutes, let's make it, um, 35. Maybe I want to change the type of text. Let's do Gotham. Let's do Gotham Black. Gotham Black 35. And let's size down the Photoshop logo some more. Control and T. Right? There we are. Let's move the text up a bit to about there. That's looking good already. I don't have to do anything else to this, right? If I were to move it like so, I selected both of them over here in the layers and I can hit Ctrl and T and I can increase the size of, sizes of both of them. See that? How cool is that? Next, what I can do, which is most important, which is what you should be doing as you're editing, is saving your project. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit Ctrl and S and then let's call this LSPV Photoshop in like five minutes or however long this tutorial is because I'm going to be using this exact thumbnail that we are creating for this video that you're watching right now. So the good thing about it is that we can always come back and if the video is six minutes, we can hit T again for a text tool and change it to six, etc., etc. right? And we can undo that change by hitting Ctrl and Z and there we are with our five minutes. And if I wanted to add some shapes to this, I can hit U on my keyboard you know, I have some options over here. If I were to right click, I can do a rectangle, an ellipse, a triangle, whatever it is I want to do. Let's do an ellipse, right? And let's click and drag, see that? But if I hold shift while still clicking, I'd get a perfect circle, see that? That's not the color I want. Let's do, let's do no fill, right? And let's add a stroke, let's add a white stroke of about 
10 pixels and then we can move this over here but you see it's on top of the photoshop logo if i don't want that all i have to do is move it down in the layers till it's behind the photoshop logo see that how cool is that and i can change the color by clicking on it or let me just pick a color here let me just pick this color here and let me pick from the pink right or pick an area on our clothing and then i can come back over here to appearance of my ellipse right here and i can just click on the stroke color and choose that same pink that i just picked from right how cool is that and because i just made some changes all i can do next is just hit ctrl and s to save and if i wanted to create another ellipse all i have to do is ctrl and j to duplicate it go back to my appearance change the stroke color to white and then bring it over and make it smaller i can do that by hitting ctrl and t for my transform options and just sizing it down like so and there we are all i have to do next is hit ctrl and s to save and let's just do one more thing let me add another shape here by hitting u for my shape tool right and then let me find let me right click on the shape and go back to rectangle and then let me just add a rectangle like a slim rectangle here with the same style as what we did for the outlines i just want like a the same 10 pixel stroke similar to what we did and if you look right here the corners of this rectangle are sharp but let's say i wanted them to be rounded i can just come over here and i can just enter like 100 pixels this corner this right here is these are my corner controls right here if i were to hit you for my shape tool you'd see it up here right this is where it would be right and you can enter the values up there but i work from my properties tab and i just showed you guys how to use your properties tab right so that's how you use your properties tab to edit all your elements right and let me just zoom this out some more and if i wanted to increase the size of this rectangle i just hit ctrl and t and i can just increase the size by pulling down one of the edges while holding shift if i didn't hold shift it would just like shrink everything for me but that's not what i wanted i just want one side to like come down like so and there we are right Control and s to save everything and we are done our youtube thumbnail is ready to go what do you guys think and let's say i wanted this rounded rectangle that we just did here to appear as if it's behind the model right all i have to do is just zoom in so you guys can see this and then i just find the rectangle here right let's rename these ellipses so i can tell them different so this is this is the pink one let's just name this pink ellipse and the other one is white ellipse right and we have our rectangle which is fine then Control and s to save now let's make it appear as if it's behind her i'm on the rectangle layer i'm just adding a mask by coming down here and all i have to do is use my eraser tool or my lasso tool to get really technical but let's just use the eraser tool make sure that my hardness is up to 100 percent and then just like zoom in some more and just like this is the the most basic way you can do it right and then all i have to do is zoom back out and literally just erase all of this and the cool thing is we're not actually erasing the rectangle itself we're erasing on the mask right here that's on the rectangle if i were to zoom out and disable the mask you see that the rectangle is still there this x in the mask is telling me that the mask is disabled right and if i were to click on the mask it would come back right so that's how you work with your shapes and your elements you use masks so you don't destroy your elements so that's non-destructive editing and designing right then let's zoom into this other side here and then let's just fine tune this so it looks believable right <laughs> how cool is that and you can do the same thing here if you want the pink one to like loop inside like you want it to look like the pink one goes behind the white one and then come back out on top all i have to do is find the pink ellipse add a mask and then erase the portion that you don't want you'd have to reduce the size of your eraser tool or you can use your marquee tool by hitting m and then 
right click if you have if you hit m and you drag out a marquee and you get a circle you can right click on the marquee and switch to a rectangle and then all you have to do is just draw out a marquee like so make sure the mask is selected on the pink ellipse and just delete that and then to get rid of this selection you just right click and select deselect or you can use Control and d on your keyboard and you see that it loops behind and then comes back out on top and we can do the same thing for the white ellipse we can come up here and let it go behind if we want right or we can just move it behind because it's just one area that's overlapping how cool is that we can do the same for the s if we want the s to go behind her shoulder let's go for the five minutes add a mask and then let me just turn off or turn down the opacity of the minutes let's just go to opacity here or i can use my number pad by hitting five i just want to see the area that the s runs along her shoulder and then i can just like use my lasso tool by hitting l so i hit l on my keyboard for my lasso tool right click and use a polygonal lasso and then i'm just gonna draw along the line of her jacket here just to ensure that it looks believable right you can use your eraser tool as well if you want so we use the eraser tool thus far we use the marquee tool and now we're using the lasso tool to create a mask right remember that you have to select the mask area if i select the text itself and try to delete it it won't work right i get an error so let's select the mask and hit delete let's turn back up the opacity to, opacity to 100 by hitting zero or you can use the opacity slider right here there we are let me zoom out and how cool is that Control and s to save our entire photoshop project so we can come back and make changes if we want and then let's go to file and then save a copy to save this as a jpeg or png that i can actually use on youtube all i have to do is hit save and then click ok you have quality options i always choose maximum and then click ok and that's all we have to do to design a youtube thumbnail and we could not have designed this awesome thumbnail without this photo that i got from envata elements now envata elements is where i go to get all of my stock photo content just like this awesome photo to design my youtube thumbnails as well as work that i do for my clients and if you want to try envata elements free for seven days go ahead and check the links in this video's description and when you fall in love with it you can go ahead and get a discount off of their one month subscription by using my discount code you can find all of that linked below so have you ever used adobe photoshop before and if not how confident are you to get started with designing based on all that we've done here today let me know in the comments below and if you're interested to learn more in adobe photoshop be sure to check out my entire photoshop playlist that i have here on the channel thank you thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video